Hello, thanks for joining us on your channel of choice at this time, African Independent Television IT. Welcome to Focus Nigeria, your daily rendezvous where we talk about Nigeria. My name is Benga Arulibagla glad to be here this morning. Barring any developments to the contrary, the National Assembly should any time from today uh, begin the evaluation of a request by President Muhammad Buhari for permission of the lawmakers to take a loan of five point five billion dollars. A breakdown of the request shows the government is asking for a sum of three billion dollars to refinance its local debts standing at over eleven trillion naira, while the balance of two point five billion dollars will be used to finance Eurobound to fund the twenty seventeen capital budget outlay. Even though the, the request for this loan has sparked off a controversy, the indications are that the lawmakers will most likely approve this request. First, as lawmakers who took part in the passage of the 2017 budget, they should, of course, be aware of the huge deficit in the 2017 budget, the over one trillion naira budget for de debt servicing, and most importantly, the worrying fact that revenue resources have continued to dip, and at present has actually dropped to uh, by over 80 percent or so. The stark reality, therefore, is that the funding options for the federal government, as far as the ambitious 2017 capital outlay are concerned, are very limited. And a request for a long-term, low-interest foreign loan becomes very attractive, uh, since other options are well, what we might call straight roads leading to Golgotha. You know, a drastic reduction in the size of government, probably, which will, of course, occasion job losses. And, of course, you know the attendant ripple effect. One civil servant will have like 10 dependents, and you know what all of that will mean. But then, it is also a clear fact that Nigeria's debt profile is rising again, as so far we have chalked up to over $15 billion now in foreign debt, and as high as $14 trillion Naira in local debt. Paul Alaje is an economist of, rep of uh, repute. He will join me shortly as we try to x-ray all of these issues. If we need a loan, if yes, maybe probably yes, how do we ensure that it is beneficial to our cause on the long run? And then, of course, the larger question of why revenue generation is dwindling at this particular time. Are we doing enough? Does this also justify the cause for states to be saddled with more of the revenue generation activities while the center just busies itself with maybe just a few functions? And by the way, today is International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. How far have we come in the task of lifting up our citizens from the debt of poverty? Over 100 million Nigerians are poor according to statistics. So, you see what we are up against. That discussion comes up shortly when Paul Alaji joins me. But some issues are trending, a few of them for you. You probably have heard that the government, through the office of the Attorney General of the Federation, has decided to press charges, criminal charges, against a battled Senator Issa Bissau, who has been up in arms against the police authorities for some time now. The five count charges against Senator Bissau include making spurious allegations against the person of the Inspector General of Police. Bissau was not present in court on Monday, and efforts by the prosecuting counsel to get Justice Ishak Belo issue a bench warrant for his arrest uh, was shot down by the judge himself, who said he needed more conviction that Senator Bissau was intent on not coming to court willingly to answer charges, and then he would know what to do. The judge has adjourned the case to Thursday. So, something to keep in view. And still from the law court, mm. today is the big day. The trial of the IPOP leader, Nam Dikadu, is expected to resume this morning at the Federal High Court here in Abuja. You already know what happened. That was when Python went to dance for the IPOP leader. And since then, we have not heard of him. Did he run away from the Python or did the Python swallow him? <laughs> Nobody is coming clear except from our Abia State Governor, Oju Zokalu, who has been categorical that Nnamdi Kanu, 
okay, like Yorubas will say, say it, spoke to his legs, Obai says, or he ran away from the python, and he may have found his way to his first home. Is it his first home or his second home in the UK? But then, in law, that means he has become a fugitive from justice, and that, of course, imposes a huge responsibility on those public officials who stood shortly for him. We'll see how that also uh, pans out later today. And then at the presidential villa, guess what? Baba received some August visitors. Three children, all guests, described as friends of the president, came to see him on Monday. And immediately after, the lovely pictures of Baba and his friends went viral on the social media. Ten-year-old Aisha Liu Gebi was said to have written a personal letter to the president offering advice while describing herself as the president's biggest fan. Hmm. There is three-year-old Maya Jamal, whose prayers for the president when he was ill and was on his hospital bed also went viral. And then, of course, the third girl actually donated her lunch money to the president's campaigns way back in 2015. So you see why Baba had to be in his best element as he received these very special friends on Monday. You. <laughs> eh? When the whole world has seen you. I'm very impressed uh, by what the children have been able to do. For you, uh, I congratulate you as I congratulate myself for being here. Your contribution has made a great impact. And uh, we won the election, and here I find myself. I'm very pleased to meet you in person. And for you, thank you very much for your letter, <laughs> which is uh, written in your own handwriting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. First and last month, time we will meet. I hope uh, while I'm here and after I left, I will be meeting you from time to time. You are we have been good friends. Yeah. Thank you very much. We wish you well. We pray for you. Indeed, our children pray for you. Uh, Mr. President, the first time you uh, came to rural Nigeria, I was probably in primary school. And alhamdulillah, the same stories that I had and what I came to witness, having participated in uh, the polity with you in CPC, my children have seen the same thing and they shall pass it on to their children. Adam Bryce next is all looking up for the elections, the governorship election, which is just days away, less than a month actually, and the campaigns are flagged off. But as usual, the PDP is already shooting itself in the foot. The party is employed in a very deep crisis. Two parallel rallies yesterday, one in Onicha, one in Oka. <laughs> and I tell you, the one by the rebels actually pulled more crowd. I will tell you more on this tomorrow. Uh, for now, let's prepare for our discussions this morning. You already know what we are looking at. Paul Alaje will be joining me. Today is International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. How far have we uh, gone along that lane? And then, of course, we look at some issues trending uh, in our economy. Join us after this short break. We wish to note that in line with provisions of Section 21.1 and 27.1 of the Debt Management Office Establishment Etc. Act, Cap D12 Laws of the Federation, the approval of the National Assembly is required for external borrowings as proposed in paragraphs 2 to 5. Summary and terms. The summary of the request in paragraphs 2 to 5 are as follows. One, $2.5 billion issuance in the international capital market to euro bonds or a combination of euro bonds and diaspora bonds for the financing of the deficit in the 2017 Appropriation Act and capital expenditure projects in the Act, as stated in paragraph three. And two, three billion dollars external borrowing for the financing of maturing domestic debt obligations through the issuance of euro bonds or through a loan syndication. With respect to the terms and conditions of the proposed external borrowings, the Senate may wish to note that being market-based transactions, the terms and conditions of the borrowings can only be determined at the point of issuance or finalization based on prevailing market conditions in the ICM. 
It is important to state that the previous issuance of euro bonds by Nigeria <clears throat> were the following coupons. $500 million 2011-10 year, 6.75%. Year, <clears throat> $500 million in 2013, five-year coupon, 5.125%. $500 million 2010, 10-year coupon, 6.375%. A 1.5 billion 2017 15 year coupon at a rate of 5.625%. These coupons were based on the prevailing market conditions at the respective times. It should be noted that the current market conditions are considered more favorable than at the time of Nigeria's last issuances of the Euro bond in March 2017 and the diaspora bond in June 2017 with secondary market yields lower than the coupons. The Federal Ministry of Finance, <coughs> the Debt Management Office, and the Federal Government's appointed transaction parties for the proposed external borrowings will work assiduously within the context of the market to secure the best terms and conditions for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Meanwhile, an overview of indicative terms and conditions is attached for your information as Appendix 1. Accordingly, the Senate is requested to kindly approve the following external borrowings. One, issuance of $2.5 billion in the ICM through euro bonds or a combination of euro bonds and diaspora bonds for the financing of the FGN 2017 Appropriation Act and capital expenditure projects in the Act. Okay, if you're just joining us, you're right on time because we are starting the conversation for this morning. Paul Alaje is there. Paul is a senior economist, SPM professionals. Good to see you, Paul. Thank you so very much for having me. It's uh, International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, this year marks the 25th anniversary of when the UN declared today, the 17th of October, as uh, a day for concerted efforts to look at poverty and how to eradicate it. For us in Nigeria, we've tried with so many things. Uh, we tried to eradicate it. We couldn't. We tried to eliminate it. We tried to reduce it through all manners of programs. Uh, which ones can I remember now? NAPEP, National, National Agency for Poverty, poverty Eradication. eradication yes. Before that, there had been, NAPEP had so many precursors yes. and all of that. How far have we come? in trying to tame this monster. If we still have these huge numbers of uh, poor Nigerians, I'm told well over 100 million, according yes. to the NBS, over 100 million Nigerians. Yes, far more than 100 million. Far more than 100 million far Nigerians more. live below the poverty line. In fact, at global statistics shows that we have about 70% of Nigerians. And 2017 shows that Nigeria population is turning more towards 190 million. But and LBS, if you are 70 percent of 70 percent of about of, let's of, be charitable. About 170 let's, million. Say, let's say 180 million. Let's be charitable because <laughs> global figures is showing that Nigeria is about 190 million. But if you're charitable, you say Nigeria is about 180 million. Mm -hmm. Even to calculate 60 percent of that is already far more than uh, 100 million people. But I think we need to understand how poverty is measured. It's not just people that hand below. One dollar and twenty-five cents. Mm. In fact, for Africa, there are other indicators. Okay. One of the indicators is anyone who's in his home, the distance between his toilet and his bedroom, to and fro, is more than sixty seconds. That is, <laughs> it will take you more than sixty seconds to get to so your toilet and to come back from it. That is, thirty seconds go, thirty seconds come. And if you look around, apart from edifices we have around town in Abuja, Lagos, for that court, maybe Kano and some places. Most places don't even plan latrine when they are building their homes, in halls. People in Abuja here, you see them build their homes with flex banner that people use for their billboard. Mm -hmm. So how would they make provision for toilets? Okay. So you have a, we have a lot of poor people around us. And poverty is not just of using money to measure. People can spend up to 1,000 naira, but yet they don't even have kitchen. 
They don't have toilet. They don't have bedroom. These are other indicators, which are, in fact, the real indicator of poverty. Because if you are rich or if you are average or if you can live above poverty, it is expected that naturally most of these things will be taken care of. Again, mm. you talk about shelter. Mm. In 2012, it was reported that Nigeria has 12 million housing gap. The same institution that released that figure, which is uh, UNESCO. 12 million. 12 mi I thought wait, the government 17 is million about 17 million. In uh -huh. 2012. Yeah. The same international body that gave us that figure says that Nigerian uh, housing gap is growing at 870,000 per annum. What you can deduce from that is this year, 2018, Nigeria has about 20 million housing gap. Now, let's look at Nigeria average family size. That's people who don't have roof who don't over have their head. Decent house. People, they can live in chanties. That's not home. Okay. They can live under the bridge. That is not home. Everybody, we have shelter, but yeah. not everybody, we have home. Yeah. But what we are looking at, for if somebody lives in shelter and it's shanty, it's not home. It's poor. Yeah. It's common sense. But when we say that somebody have decent houses, we are saying Nigeria, as of today, 2017, Nigeria may have about 20 million housing gap. Now, housing gap, an average family in Nigeria is man, the wife, in the places where they don't believe in multiple wives, mm. and four children. That is six. If you say six times 20, what mm. you have is about 120 million Nigerians. Doesn't mean there are no structures. There are. You can see structures everywhere, but most of them are empty. That is what you Particularly have. Particularly in Abuja. Particularly in Abuja. Most of them are empty. So we have huge housing gap, which is another indicator for measuring poverty. And if you see to the right, to the left, each time you drive on Nigerian roads, what do you see? You see plenty chances mm -hmm. where people have now suddenly accepted their faith that this is the best, the God of the nature will throw at them. But when you compare that sharply with over say 500 to 800 billion US dollars Nigeria hand in the last 15 years. You wonder why the road are so uh, bad. How much? About well, 400 to 500 billion US dollars Nigeria hand just from crude oil. Just from crude oil. Mm. Just from crude. In how many years? In about 10, 15 years. Mm. Although we could do more than that, if I, I, I can show instances and instances. Our minister was represented our country in, in the, um, I think, earlier this year, where the United, the, the United Nations for Tourism, the executive secretary for United uh, of Tourism said, between now, 2017 to 2030, at least 1.8 billion people we tour the world. And one of the destinations that those people are looking at is the African continent. If Nigeria, being the big brother, as we call ourselves in Africa, says we want to attract only 10% of this population, say we are looking at 180 million people come to Nigeria. So are they going to go to Gudu? Are they going to go to Mambila? Mm -hmm. Are they going to go to, where are they going to go? And they spend only $1,000, only $1,000. What you have as an economy that we have of our GDP is going to be minimum of 180 billion US dollars. That, that would be more than what we probably will get from Oil. It will be more than oil. In yeah. fact, our budget... In, this, in the same period. In the same period. Our budget from, if you count 13 years back, we've done less than 100, U, 100 billion US dollars. So from one sector, tourism, one sector, tourism, you can get 180 billion dollars. And that's one sector we have neglected. We have neglected. That is one sector we seem not to understand. Because to me, the managers of the economy have no business in governance. They have no business in government, I beg your pardon. They have no be governing the people. Because if you look at those people who are in public sector, you want to ask, what is it that they've done successfully? And I can tell you, 2017 budget, or 2016 budget even, Government went and borrowed so much. Mark you, the budget for 2016 and even 2017, yeah. they were in budget deficit. They were in deficit. Oh, yeah. Huge. Up deficit. to about, right now we have up to about 70%. Government is now borrowing 5.5 from your intro. 5.5 yeah. billion US dollars is approximately 1.9 trillion naira. Yeah. Approximately 2 trillion naira because they are borrowing. You see, this is not the first time we are borrowing. Last week we borrowed. Next week, we are going to borrow. Guess from what? It is from treasury bills, bonds, DMO, Suku bond, and all manner of bonds that we are selling. We are borrowing, collecting money from the money supply to the banks, commercial banks, microfinance banks. We are collecting them and giving to government to spend for administrative reasons. 
because government make it very clear we want to complete capital project that is why we are borrowing this money but what are but we that leaving be that will assuming it will not be administrative let me even assume it's not administrative but what are we leaving the banks with i will i want to show the both sides of the coins and see what is the best decision. I hope legislature listen because they have to take decision on this. Mm. And this I, I hope they are listening too. And this is because I have something very funny too on them this morning. Mm. Uh, their position on eradication of poverty. I heard that they are proposing to set up to to pass a law that will set up uh, a poverty eradication commission. And I just laugh. <laughs> what kind of a people are we? we? We see a problem. The first thing we think of is a law to mm. solve that problem. And that law must necessarily create a bureaucracy, mm. which will not work. Of course, it will not work. I, I, I may even get to that in, in, the, in the course of this conversation. So we are all the money we are expecting from crude oil, majorly, we are going to use it for administrative reasons. Mm. That's what it means. Which means that the money we realize from oil and other windows, we are not going to use them for development. We are going to use them for administrative reasons. It's going to be on consumption, if I can use economics language, and not on investment. So we will now need to borrow for investment. And this borrowing, you can get 5%, treasury bill could go as high as 14%. For us to invest, it has to be at a cost to us. So it's either that we are not earning enough for my economy, mm. or the people that are managing the economy are too much, and we spend so much. For instance, the United States have about 20 to 21 ministers, including the Secretary of State. In Nigeria alone, we have 36 necessitated by the Constitution. Yeah. 36 or 37 ministers, if you want to add FCT to it. Then each of these Of course, FCT, states, for the purposes of minister, uh, ministerial position, FCT is treated as a state. It's treated as a state. So, yeah. so you now have each of the states having an average of 15 commissioners. Now, Nigeria has how many governments? We have 38 governments. FCT, the federal government, then 36 governments. Mm. It's perhaps the third largest in the whole world. United States don't have that. So when you talk about United States having 100% GDP ratio, I mean, debt to GDP ratio. But you see, United States is not even a right measure for anybody in the world. Why? If everybody makes United States stronger. We all demand for US dollars. Our vote, in fact, to measure our performance at the world level, we have to keep some of our money in the dollars. So how do you compare yourself with an economy that whether it is good for them or bad for them, you must take part in their pains. Yeah. That is what the economy says. So it will be unreasonable for us as a country to want to now benchmark our success. And Britain, some economy have their currency benchmark in the pounds. So you cannot use those countries as a true measure. Any economy that tries to use them, we fail. So what do we use? So what do we use is the reality of what we are. What is our revenue? Our revenue as of today is about $5 trillion. In, I mean, $5 trillion naira in a year. And what we spend of gener revenue generation yeah. to pay service debt of every one era, we spend about 37 kobo. If we borrow locally or internally up to about 1.9 trillion naira, we will now need to be spending to finance our existing budget or liquidate matured debt mm. with about 60 kobo from every one naira government revenue because that is the real thing. We have big economy, according to some people, which is about 400. Uh, billion. 500, 500 down. Okay, you are not using the rebate. Yes, I'm using, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, not I want to be real. Okay. I want to be real. 400, about 400 billion uh, dollar. US dollars uh, of economy. Yeah. But only 5% of that economy is given to government in revenue. So how real is the economy that we claim we have? Because on the average, we are, we are expected to have between 15 to 20% is what you go to government. And if the government goes that, there will be no need for us to do that. But what are the things we need to do? We need to do what we need to do, which is state government needs to look inward. And state government will not look inward with the so current long. economic structure. And let me say this. Mm -hmm. It's better we put it in the air. Even if the government of President Buhari refuses to adjust economic structure, and now we underline the word economy. I'm not a politician economic structure of Nigeria, the next government or the government after that government, that's the last hope we have, and I can prove that to you, must, we have no option. We have to adjust the economy. So instead of the political restructuring people are talking about, they can, the, politicians the, can, can do political restructuring. Focus on economic restructuring. The, bo the bottom line of political restructuring is economic restructuring. 
Why do people want to talk about region so that they can get, they would not mention so that revenue can come at the regional level. So the bottom line of all restructuring people talk about is well, still economy. Yeah. Why do politicians come to office? Economic reasons. But we don't think that people that understand the economy, they may not be economists. They don't necessarily need to be. But people that can manage the economy of have a little understanding of our economic wars are the people that should be in government. in government. Because what do you manage? You are here to manage people. You are here to manage macro, you are here to manage macro economy, which is even more difficult than micro in business. So you cannot come and say you have no understanding or you don't even have understanding of education at all. And you are relying on people who equally don't know or have, even when they know, have selfish interests. So you are supposed to be the regulator and not just federal government now. Mm -hmm. We are even talking about state government and even local government. So what kind of economy should we run? An economy where the real people, the real Nigeria at the local level, local government level. So they have access to their revenue. They can build their road. But how do you criticize somebody who depends on his state governor to give him money and the road is bad? Mm. But when he has right to his revenue, says, for instance, we, I talked about housing problems so that we can also talk about solutions. Can we say that each local government should generate with the resources they have in their midst, maybe human, maybe natural resources, mm. to build minimum of 5,000 housing? And you multiply by that 774. You see what happened in two years. Covered Suddenly, the, you've the, covered the, the, the 20 million. Yes, you've so covered so is. much housing, and you can repeat that for 10, for 15 years. But what happens when you have housing? You don't need a professor, university professor. I don't. I'm not mean to be derogatory to professor. I love professors. I love the, it's, it's. It's not easy to get. So I don't mean to be derogatory. But what I'm saying is, you don't necessarily need a professor to build a house. You need. Artisans. Artisans, and those are the real population. Those are people that you talk about that are poor. These are where you need them. somebody to fetch water for you. You need an architect. You need an engineer. You need, when they are sick, they now go, there's a value chain. There is, it goes, they go to the hospital. This is what we need. And we have these artisans that perhaps have just primary education, which for me is the most important education, or secondary education, which is next to it. They don't necessarily need to have university or polytechnic education. So we don't need to now say, let us continue to build more skills, because even the skills we build, leaders, you will not have any of their children in such schools because they don't trust it. Mm. They don't trust the school. So they have Probably to find they know what, what is in there. They know what is in there. <laughs> so they, they take them away from the school to, 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 to somewhere. So not to lose the thought on borrowing. Yes. So should government borrow precisely at the should, federal level? Do we need this five point five billion dollars? We need it but we cannot sustain Broke it. Broken into two two we, transits. I said we, we need it for two purposes. I said we need it, but the we cannot the sustain one, it. The first aspect of it is the three billion. Yes. Government says it is to use that three billion dollar as a kind of refinancing local debts, which is already over over eleven trillion naira. Uh, and most of the local debts are short term, high interest loans. But if you use these three billion dollars, you can use it to purchase those lo those debts and turn them around to long term loans. Because where you are getting the three billion dollars from is going to be long, long term payment. So we are using, we are sub substituting those short term debt with a long term loan, and of course also of low interest. That argument is not complete. Okay. If you what's go the, to what's debt, the word that the government is not telling us. Thank you. When you go to www.dmo.gov.ng, that is the debt management. Debt management. Uh, as at today, as at, as we are talking, yeah. it shows that Nigeria has about 19 trillion debt profile. Not 11. I said, go to the, you, if you, have your, you can go there. Mm. Go to the website now. DMO. DMO.gov.ng. Yeah, yeah. The first page that will open to you is the summary page of debt as at June 2017. Not even as at today. Because as at today, I, I, analysts will say that it's even more than 20 trillion. Now, of those debt, if only 4 trillion or so is what you have external. So even if you collect 3 billion, according to the yeah, argument you that, push yeah. forward, you only have 1 trillion. That's the government argument. No, not, you, not you, not. You've only, according to government <laughs> argument, yes. so you only have one trillion you have settled. Only one trillion. So you have not done much. You have not really done so much. So you see, you need to look for ways of, you see, we, we want to try and look for easy way out. Shortcuts. Shortcuts. It will not cut it. We need to find ways of making this economy work. We need to find way of raising revenues. We have them 
of making revenues available yeah, in I'll this economy. I'll come back to that because you were talking about five trillion naira being the revenue projection. Yes. Could we do more? Because we can do I, we, more. We, we also find out. Find out but I just don't want to. to, to I want you to conclude on this. Okay. And then we'll come back to this issue of revenue. So, so if we now borrow generation. three trillion yeah. to set to mark you, this three trillion uh, is going to out come of, out of at five uh, percent minimum, right? average of five percent per annum. Um, let me also look at things that we may not consider today, which will happen. This, some of these debts will last for 30 years. Now, you can understand what could happen in future, thinking backward. What was Naira to the dollar 30 years ago? Hmm. What, less than 100. what will now be Naira to the dollar in, in the future? Years, yeah. Because we are collecting it in that currency. There is fantastic argument, according to the minister, which makes all economic sense, that it is better to collect who have external debt than internal debt. And I will explain. When you have internal debt, you are crowding out effect. You are crowding out the private sector. You are crowding out investment. What it means is this. If your commercial bank, instead of me to deposit my money with you at 8 to 10% per annum, I would prefer to give the money to Central Bank. One is the surest safety, not commercial bank, mm. surest safety. So I will give my money to CBN, which is even now promising me 14 to 16 percent, or bond that is possibly about 18 percent. Now, commercial bank will bleed, get the effect. Private sector persons or companies that we would have, have no collected, so they will not. So interest rate will now increase. Mm. When interest rate increase, private sector will have no money to collect. And when they have no money, the bottom line is the most important thing in every economy. There will be jobs. Is, yeah, jobs. Be more, it is the people that now get the job. Guess where government will shoot itself? It has made monetary policy from CBN, but it will not have effect on fiscal. When there are no jobs, people will have no jobs to do. So how do you tax them? So revenue Which is will revenue for government will. eventually. So where government should have collected money to repay the, uh, to pay the, the debts collected from the persons, we even disappear. This is vicious. Aspect. So it now leads to previous cycle and people, it will just be kids. You hear, let's, last time when we were going to borrow, we said, let's borrow a little. You've heard that language again. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it the last time I was here. So you've heard that, let, a little more, it's just 19. Then it was 12. Oh, we are 19. Oh, a little more, 25. A little more, 70. So it is, it is not visible, even from yeah. this yeah, argument. But, but the government is also arguing that our debt profile is not that bad that compared with other countries in the world, whereas I'm talking about debt to GDP ratio, they say the government argument is that ours is just about 19%. Are there countries that are doing over 100% already? AKA United so States 90, of America. 90% so is, is still manageable, isn't it? It is not the figure that is manageable. It, it is, is the different. impact mm. that is manageable. You don't, for African countries, you don't measure debt to GDP ratio. You measure debt to revenue. So revenue of the country is about 5.5 trillion naira. Which is nothing compared to you all want those to other countries. Borrow, yes, you want to now borrow 1.9 trillion naira. Compare it. Even assuming we are not owing anything again. We're not in, in, owing anything before now. But just that you want to borrow 1.9 and your revenue, how would you pay back? Would you ask the paper seller, which you are counting as part of your GDP, or you are asking Davido, who is in Nollywood, or who is, in, who is an artist, mm. to pay, or you are asking Uber driver. I want to be real, because economy is real life. You are asking Uber driver, or furniture maker, or a cobbler that shines my shoe, to pay. It is not going to be like that, because what most African countries even use is GDP, not NNI, not national income. It is gross domestic product. So that in itself is limiting. Mm. So because it is limiting, the best way to measure, you can use that to put the figures out there. And beyond the figures is, how much do you truly have? Now, GDP is good. My question will be, what proportion, and this settles, this put the case at rest, yeah. what proportion of the GDP do we get as revenue? We get about 5% of GDP as revenue. But you want your debt to GDP to be much. Listen, this is what will happen. By the time we borrow this money and we peradventure borrow any other one that is as close to this, mm. we are not going to do 100% of our revenue to pay for debt. And nothing goes to development. And nothing goes to even administration. Even administration. Because now you have set over about 70% going to, uh, into administration. And you are saying it's to the GDP. It's not realistic. I understand that government must get money anyway. That is the truth.
So, but I would have preferred a situation where we look for something a little bit smaller or lower and now mm. use other method, alternative method to development. For instance, we have land busy doing nothing and we want to solve housing gap. Mm. Can we get people, developers, who can source their money from anywhere and say, we're going to partner with you by giving you land. I know Abuja tries some, you have houses like Sunnyvale and so on, develop. But can we repeat that at the local level? But all of these may only work in Abuja because it's Abuja, and maybe Lagos because of its economic development. But other places, because most persons are in office because they want to come to Abuja and collect money. Hmm. People should be encouraged to work. Government is work. Government is not just going to collect service. money. Yeah. It is service. Yeah. You must think, before you contest, think of how you can generate fund. Can I generate fund? And I can tell you for free. Think there of how you are no going to state. make a difference. Yes, there is no state in Nigeria that don't have capacity to self-sustain itself. None. We'll, co we'll come to that because it's part of what I'm also thinking we should look at. But let's move to this revenue issue first. Why is our revenue generation capacity dipping? Something happened last week. The 2017 budget of some agencies, ministries, and departments of government that ordinarily should be revenue generation agencies. Guess what happened? Their revenue projection is almost as their expenditure projection. I project to generate 250 billion naira in revenue. But my budget, my expenditure, is about 260. So that means by the time I take what, um, what I need to spend, mm. what is left to get to government is very minimal. And you talk of agencies like MPA, NIMASA, uh, I think fees is the only one that still has the promise to generate about four point something trillion naira, uh, whereas his budget is just about I think four hundred and something billion and all of that. But I'm just shocked that all of these agencies that are that ought to be generating revenue are beginning to fall down on the ladder. What is happening? Does that uh, justify the argument, therefore, that perhaps we need to devolve more revenue generation powers? to the states. That's the truth. That, see, that, will, that will cut our eyes. Yes. Okay. We cannot continue to rely on some revenue generating um, agencies of government. And we can all see that there is, an, there is already a mentality that you are a government worker to generate fund. Or you are in an agency. You know, there's difference between agency and even other parastata. That as, gov as you are generating revenue, you are supposed to make more money. What are the things they want to spend money for? You will, hear, you will see the issue of vehicle. You will see the issue of some things that they can actually do without. See, this issue of tightening your belt is not going around. So what do we need to In advanced country, there are places where private sector was given budgets. The, you know? It, 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 most of these revenue generation, the way we do it in Nigeria, they tell us what they are looking at and they tell us how much they will spend. It, it's not supposed to be like that. It is this is what we want you to generate. And this is how much we have to give to you to work. That's purely private sector. Mm. No boss will show up and tell you that this is... Do you, do, have you seen bankers that go to, to meet their MDs and say, MD, this is what we can generate and this is what you give us? Mm -hmm. That is the difference between here and Dubai. They have a lot of Muslims, we have a lot of Muslims. This is the difference between here and Israel. They have Jewish or Christians, we have Jewish or Christians. But you see, beyond the religion, whatever I said that is because religion is not what matters. Human is human, <coughs> irrespective of what you practice. Here, we want to eat our cake and, and, still, have, keep it. and still keep it. <laughs> it doesn't work. All agencies of government should be given target. Naturally, some will resign. And you don't need them. So what are the windows? Government job is perhaps to ask consultants who are individuals. I know this government is doing that for some persons. You can see, um, I think FIRS have started to employ consultants. You can see the difference in their books. It's in their books. You can see the difference. So how do we bring people who are private sector driven? Who are not saying that my income is a function of my is a function of the revenue I generate? Not that whether I sell or not, well, my salary is going to come. 
So mm -hmm. if it's a function of whether I do anything, my salary is going to come, then people will not, there, there will be no incentive to work. Mm -hmm. But when I know that my performance is what will determine what performance, what performance, yeah. performance, uh, performance bonus. Yes, yeah. so mm -hmm. it is what will determine what I have. Uh, yeah, you, you, you will see that so many things will change. Yeah. And we need somebody... And, and I think that's what is happening in fees. Because if you look at their budget for this year, they have a, I think, 40 or 30 percent increase in salaries. Yes. For the workers. Yes. I think it is in anticipation of what they are promised to generate. Yes. And you will see that they will meet. They will meet up. Yes, you see that they will meet up. Of course. When, because because when there is the, more money, is the, then they will go all out to ensure they generate revenue for government. So every other agencies of government should just stay clear from that. But you see, the function of government is to also measure our reward and punishment for those who per perhaps have performed very well or those, and to those, respectively now, who have not performed very well. So if you say that you want to generate $2 billion naira for me mm. and you tell me you want to spend $1.8 billion, naira, then what you are giving me is only $200 million. Naira, and I say, I don't need you. Because <laughs> if, I, if I source these mm. same stuff to a private sector, they will perhaps give me $1.2 billion. So they will give me $1 billion naira extra. Is it not better for me to work with them? And you will say that, oh, but they are not government workers. I say, but they are workers. You see, the issue of me not government worker and blackmail from labor most of the time, it goes beyond the things we see at the surface. For instance, I'm sorry to digress. Labor will tell you we want um, minimum wage yeah. to increase. increase. Well, uh, as, of rep is, yeah, as of rep is even considering 30,000. Yeah. But you see, that is not the right argument for labor. Labor will only benefit maximum two years. Spiral inflation will kick in. This is what labor should be That's saying. First, we want our children to go to school that will only pay 10% or 5% of the cost. And this university or polytechnic or primary school must be of quality standard as approved by us. Mm. Two, healthcare. Every person in the civil service mm. must mm. have mm. access to, uh, what do we call that, um, health insurance, mm. such that it covers us, it covers our family members. So when that is available. And then transport. And transport, Government very important. Yes, so you should fix that. When you do that, those are the things that take your, that salary. Take your salary. And it's not just your salary. You are now working for the entire country. But if it is just you, and you go to the market where I go to, then the prices of goods and services would increase. It will affect me. When you are now coming to buy from me, in the circular, chain, I mean, I circular flow of income, I will take from you. Eventually, <laughs> prices will go up, and yeah. everything labor have said will crash yeah. down. Inflation will double again mm -hmm. or increase. Then you now say that, where, where have we gone back? So government will now say, oh, don't worry. In the next five years, just suffer now. Suffer for the next eight more years, or then we are going to increase. So it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. What works is we must all come and tell government, your primary assignment is development. Mm -hmm. When you make education work, you make road work, and more importantly, you provide reasonable quantity amount of power. Mm -hmm. If power is stable today, most of the burden government is carrying. We not carry it anymore. Mm -hmm. Some persons who are even in government or who are in public service or are civil service, we'll be doing, we'll be doing and they may even, when, when they see that it's clashing, they may even resign yeah. and employ more people because the persons you need to be employed are not just big companies, they are small companies. Mm -hmm. To bring a country out of poverty, you need to empower MSME micro people whose businesses are less than two million naira. Mm. So people, people who are selling five, yes 10, they employ five people. so when they employ people then the burden is shifting away from the from the government. So not government saying we are going to promise ten thousand or five thousand. Yeah, out of how many? Yeah. Out of, out of 100, over one hundred million, million poor people. people. So, poor people now. so 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 you, you, you can't be promising ten thousand. That's a drop in the ocean. But you need to empower private sector. So whatever you're gonna do to make power work, whether by saying you want to increase something on the grid or you even dismantle the press by allowing state government, mm. state government to make it work. I was in Castina not so long ago, and I saw, uh, is it wind, uh, wind generation? Waves. And I, they were down. I, it was two weeks ago. They were down. Mm. So we need, we have so much resource, but I think the challenge we have is how to manage the resources, how to bring the right person in position to manage the resources. Oh, let me read some tweets, so many tweets pending. Uh, let me just read the ones that are on before I load the uh, fresh ones. Uh, Otumba says this guy should replace Adioshu. Okay. Uh, then Ogome Bunam Obiozo says yes, estates in Abuja are expensive. Not everyone can afford it. Uh, 
Then Demola Kundaga, oh my God, really enjoy your guest, Alaji on State of the Economy. Okay. Uh, Santa Jerry, the administration is worse than clueless. They are looking for monies to fund elections for 2019. Uh, destiny, part of the loan we also, okay, is retreating what we treated. In, Af King, Nupe, in Africa, you don't measure debt to income, you measure debt to revenue. That's exactly, it's, That's exactly it's correct, yes. Okay, and Dreamland, Dreamland says, I pray we will wake up one day, rather we tweet fight, I pray we will wake up one day, rather we tweet fight on who has the best jollof rice or Messi versus Ronaldo. <laughs> uh, your Amos says, please ask your guests to explain why the next government or the one after must go, uh, must do economic restructuring. And then Santa Jenny, if at all federal government has to borrow, it should be technical loan. What's the difference? Uh, and then Turakinu is saying, according to GMU, Nigeria has a debt profile of 19 trillion naira. That's on the uh, website. Then Dennis Okudi Limos is, Mr. Agbega, I think PMB, Kemi Adeoshu, Udo Doma, and CBN need to enroll into your guest economic institution for better economic training. Do you have, a, you have an institution where we can bring all those people, the president and his economic managers, to come and learn some things? <laughs> anyway, don't mind, Nigerians. Let's go on. Yes, uh, we should move to the issue of revenue generation and the capacity of the state. You were saying something about the state, and I have something jotted down. Sometime, I think last week or two weeks, I read something comparing Niger State in Nigeria and Holland. Holland is probably the size of half of Niger State in terms of land mass. Because Niger State is 74,109 square kilometers in terms of size. I think the, the, the second biggest in Nigeria, second to Boronu, yes. in terms of land mass. And that writer was to the fact that Holland generated over a hundred billion dollars from agriculture in one year and we're looking at what niger state has generated in the same one year from these huge results called land i can i couldn't find any yes what niger has generated is backlog of debts of pensioners <laughs> of about three years according to available reports a payment of fantastic allowances to yes. previous Public office orders. Exactly. That is what Niger State has done. Now, Niger State, I've also seen the same reports, and um, everything still goes down to leadership. Leadership. The mentality we have as of today, and you see, I think, I'm beginning to think maybe it's our culture. So one person... What has culture got to do with I, I'm just beginning to think, is it African? Because I check most African countries... Or is it our gene? <laughs> no, uh, we've tested so many genes. There is no gene that talks about you cannot see a result of you be wealthy, even in the bloodline of the queen or people in England. There is nothing that says that you cannot achieve as such as somebody. In fact, research shows that the children of the well to do in society, they don't carry it to their, the, the next generation. Mm -hmm. When their father bestows wealth on them, it's difficult. Less than 5% globally have been able to transfer it. So it is not a function of in the board or board line or gene. Mm. It's just a function of ability, first of all, understanding what you would do. Two, do you have vision? In Holland, there is vision. See, um, apart from that, in Nigeria, one, I've mentioned the issue of weather. People ask me why is weather, is weather related to development. Mm. The weather in Nigeria is too comforting. We are too comfortable with the weather. In Holland, they can if not even afford to vote leaders who cannot even battle weather. Do we need a shot in the arm, therefore, so, to, to reset our brains. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but here, when somebody wants to, wants to go for election, what, what, what are the narratives we are putting out there during election time, electioneering process? We say, I'm going to create a job. We, nobody yeah, from that crowd will ask you how. How? I'm going to fight insecurity. Nobody will ask you how. So what we have is we now bring musicians Dance, People do, do who don't our... understand how economy work, they will now be dancing, we'll be throwing a barbari guy here and there, we'll be throw abusive language. In some cases, I neck will say, please, this is going too hot, please try and reduce it. But in advance what that we say that their debt to GDP ratio is 100 percent Guess what they do? They circulate papers. So you can go to the blog of the contestant and read what he would do. That's not what we do here. It is hardly a bit, it, I'm happy that we have Twitter that people can even tweet their intention, and you can pick it up and say, oh, this is what this person is saying. And the job is becoming relatively easier.
for, for, for media persons. So instead of also getting right person in the media, maybe as public relator or as a public, I mean, as an assistant secretary or so, something for politician, what most of those people do is not to put out what the economic policy of politician would be. It is the propaganda of what elect, I mean, of, of what a person is buying for position. What, exact the, what the e population. exactly, that's what they put up. So that we don't, most of the time, we don't even have what to hold leaders accountable for. Because they've not said so much. Most of the statements have been very broad. And how do you say, I want to fight unemployment? If I create one, I've reduced unemployment. It's just that by, by one person. Mm -hmm. So by what, by what will be the parameter of re I mean, reduction in unemployment? And what you see is that when many people get to office in Africa, and particularly in Nigeria, it's difficult before we even appoint ministers. Why? Because we, are, we were not even working as a team. We're working as a party. So I've not even pre-identified who are those smart guys that will help deliver this vision that I have. Mm. And I have asked in many places, and I can ask you, I'm sorry, Mr. Benga, where do you see Nigeria in the next 20 years? Mm. Based on the vision that our leaders are painting before us, where do you see it? And let me tell you, 20 years plus your age, will you still be on that chair? 20 years Probably plus my be, age. be a lot weaker. Will I, will <laughs> I still be on this chair? Where will I be? And our children that is 10 years old today will be 30. Those that are 20, will be 40. And people say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Those that are leading us today, with what they are saying uh, that we should do, or we take Nigeria, will it still be there? Will it still be the same problem we have in the next 20 years? And for me, development narratives is, are not what we, what we fizzle out in the next two, three, five years. It's what we still keep going on in the next 20 years. But how do we begin with it? one step at a time. I mentioned, and I will mention it again if I have the time, mm. that we are almost losing out on 100 million pencils. That's simple. 100 million pencils by next month, or the month after next month, would have lost the opportunity to produce it for our people, pupils. That window came, before it came, we said it on this platform. Mm. What is government going to do for private sector to support them in ensuring, are we going to tell CBN, are we going to import machine that we need to start producing pencils? Because most of the pencils that poopies are using, and you can sample the carries made in China. Yeah. What are we going yeah. to do such that instead pencils, of people, erasers, I mean rulers, rulers, sharpness, so that we start, we start manufacturing, even mathematical sets. Yeah. You know how many people write WAEC, and they need mathematical sets for, where is it produced? China. And we have sold almost all the materials needed. In fact, there are eco-friendly pencils that you use paper. You have several newspapers that some people piled in their office that are not useful. That we can now convert to make pencil with the material inside it, and we have actually pencil. It is durable, it is better, and we can have a better economy. Thank you very much. Sir. All right. I, I didn't see the team for, uh, for this year on the part of government, but I already told you they are thinking of setting up a national poverty eradication commission. Does that show uh, signs of people that are serious about we've, tackling We've shut down several. Poverty? We've shut down several. We've shut down NAPEP. We've shut down, um, 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 is it Better Life? We've shut down so many things. So we are just going to do that. Create public sector driven jobs that we put burden again on the government and make people poorer. Yeah. But when we look at what are the real problems of the people, mm. we have human capital deficiency. You see a young entrepreneur meet another entrepreneur, but because what he was taught about entrepreneurship in school was taught by a lecturer who has not even done business before. And what is wrong with us, what Harvard would do is to bring people who are in the business community in their country to come and talk to people who are taking entrepreneurship. We have good business people in Nigeria, even if the size of the business is SMEs, even if they are not so successful, they need to talk to young people in school so that they can know the challenges ahead and perhaps how to solve them. Then we have the issue of funding, we have power. I don't just want to mention all, all the problems because of times. Yeah, we just have to go. And somebody is correcting me. He says uh, Niger State has the largest land mass, and I'm just trying to see whether I can agree with him. My own. Well, he says Niger State, that's Nasir Aliu. Sorry, Niger State is the largest state, 76,366 square kilometers, which is 8% of the total land mass of Nigeria. But Onu State is second, and then mm. Taraba. Okay. Maybe I'm uh, just opposed there because Taraba is third as well on my list. Thank you so much, Nas Nasiru Aliyu. That shows that uh, you were following us keenly. Thank you so much.
Paul, thank you so much. Thank you so you very know. much for having Appreciate this. your time. Paul Alaje is Senior Economist at uh, SPM Professionals. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you too for investing your time with us. Find time to join us same time tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you then.